acidosis that we're talking about today is respiratory acidosis. There's a really big acidosis story in calves that's at the other end of the calf. Metabolic acidosis comes from calf diarrhea or, or gut upsets. And, and we're not talking about that kind of acidosis today. That's in an older calf. The respiratory acidosis is in the, the brand new calf. Goes back to some stuff in our high school chemistry that we don't want to talk about. But basically, if a calf gets too much carbon dioxide or CO2 in its blood, then it's going to break down into a lot of hydrogen ions, which is acid, which leads to acidosis. We call it respiratory acidosis because it comes from a problem with breathing. We know that the calf is in the birth canal during second stage of labor. It's going through this huge transition. It's coming away from the mother's placenta, where it got all its fuel oxygen, and where it, the mother took care of all the carbon dioxide, and going through the birth canal out to fresh air, where it has to do a transition from the placenta to, to breathing. So the transition, if it happens real smoothly and quickly, it's not a problem. But on a real good calving, it takes maybe two minutes. It goes from the calf breathing, if you will, through the placenta to not breathing, because it's right inside that birth canal for two minutes. And that means it is still functioning, it is still alive, it is still making carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide just keeps on building up in the blood of the calf. So therefore, that makes it acidotic. A little bit of respiratory acidosis is exactly what triggers the calf's body to go <gasps> and gasp. And we love to see that. It's, you know, the miracle of birth. But if it doesn't go real fast, maybe I, as the producer, I don't actually see that it took longer. There's times when we show up and we don't know what's been going on. We first look at what we know, what was happening when you first noticed her. Condition of stress in the cow. Is she covered in dirt? Is she frantic? Is she calm? Is she working at it on her own? Is she progressing or not? Have you given her enough time? And then there becomes a point when you have to say, okay, we've been doing this for an hour. There's no progress. We have to cut to the chase and pull this calf. So if we go to talking about dummy calves, we feel that we intervene very early. We monitor them very closely. One of the first things we'll notice is when it is born, it's too dopey or sleepy, or we call it dummy calf. It's too dumb to get up, to write itself into sternal. That's one of the main things we talk about. So then we realize, well, there are two things I can do. We can take an ambu bag. An ambu bag is basically a bag that I can squeeze and it will push air into the nostrils of the calf. So I'm going to help the calf breathe in oxygen and blow off carbon dioxide to quickly get rid of the respiratory acidosis. The second thing I can do is give electrolytes. Now that might sound really simplistic because we all tube electrolytes. Unfortunately, tubing electrolytes, which will help buffer out acid in the bloodstream, it will take care of it eventually. It's not nearly fast enough for a baby calf with respiratory acidosis. So you give the calf colostrum and you, or maybe this is where you call in your vet, you, you give the calf electrolytes in the vein. Every calf that you can come out with on top positively impacts our operation 100%. To me, it just makes sense. <laughs>